Appreciate it. Joining us now to discuss former Tampa Bay Buccaneers wide receiver under Gruden, Michael Clayton. He's the author of the book, Chasing My Rookie Year, The Michael Clayton Story. Michael, thanks so much for joining us. So you've talked openly about the dark moments you experienced under Coach Gruden. After reading what he wrote in those emails, were you surprised? Uh, I was not surprised simply because I've had a history with John Gruden and uh, it's unfortunate um, that everything has, um, that the people have been hurt. Uh, the good thing is that everything has come full circle and now um, that his character uh, has been revealed, people fully understand the turmoil that has been caused and that players have gone through. You know, I look at former players like Antonio Brown, who had a situation in Oakland. I look at guys like Camille Mack, who had a, a situation uh, with the Raiders. And when I know, from, based upon my experience, what I uh, had to go through personally, I could fully understand. But sometimes your story isn't always told. So now we get to fully see uh, what John Gruden was all about. Uh, it's unfortunate for his family. It's unfortunate for uh, the coaches who have had to remain silent under his leadership, and especially for the players who have had to uh, hold in uh, their emotions under his leadership because we live in a culture where uh, when you have a good job like playing in the National Football League, you can't always speak out. So now that those guys are uh, excited to see that they have now a relief if they were, in fact, uh, harmed emotionally uh, by John Gruden. Well, let's talk about these larger cultural issues within the NFL. First, let's go to the homophobia. It's worth noting until last night, Gruden coached the only openly gay NFL player, Carl Nassib, uh, as, as uh, Coy just mentioned, who, who, by the way, has not made a public comment about this yet. Take us into a typical NFL locker room. Is that kind of language normal? Um, you know, honestly, um, it, it varies. It depends on where you are, who's the leader on that team, and what's really tolerated by your captains on that team. Honestly speaking, growing up playing a game of football, uh, it was, you know, naturally frowned upon growing up. But we've grown, we've matured uh, in our time, and we've learned to accept things and accept people for who they are. So as times have changed, the expectation is for you to get better, especially when you're fortunate enough to wear the tag of the NFL brand, whether you're a player or a coach. There's a certain standard that you have to uphold. And look, these emails were sent to somebody. So that speaks to the culture that is not only uh, from from John Gruden or from head coach, but it speaks to the larger culture at hand that it is present. And hopefully after this situation kind of fully unfolds that people understand what uh, what what players go through, what people in other organizations go through when a leader like that is at the helm and at an elevated position. And then there's the, the sexist and mis misogynistic comments he made about uh, female refs. There are five full-time female refs in the league right now. Um, and even though they don't say it publicly, do you get the sense that other players, other coaches uh, might agree with Gruden's sexist remarks about female referees? I, I can't honestly speak to that. I, I definitely don't know. I know that uh, we have a tremendous culture here in Tampa Bay uh, with Bruce Arians at the helm who kind of showed the NFL world how it's done bringing in women to work for our organization who have done a tremendous job. Uh, and I think, you know, you just have to lead by example. We have some great examples of, you know, the majority of, of coaches. I coached, uh, played under Coach Rich Basaccia. I know that those players are going to absolutely love him, adore him. And I know that players, because uh, coaches like that that I've had an experience with are not like that. And I haven't met I haven't honestly met anybody who, who shares the same sentiment as John Gruden, but who knows what happens or goes behind or what people say behind closed doors. You know, obviously, um, you, you act a certain way at work, but when you go, uh, you know, when you go home, you're talking a certain way. Uh, I just believe that John Gruden was at such an elevated high position based upon my experience that he deemed himself as an untouchable. And now that things have all come full circle, he has to bear the price of uh, the things that he did. And hopefully he comes out well on the other side. I'm still fortunate for the things that he did for me and my family. It's so easy to kick a person when they're down. And I, I even say to the world, even though we go through things like this and we see people who go through things like this, a believer like myself, if you feel like you are a believer in God, you don't have the luxury to be a part of a cancel culture because mm. you have to love those 
individuals who do wrong by you. So I choose to, hey, I can talk my truth, but at the same time, John Gruden is a person who needs support, too, at this moment, especially his family and his kids. And I just say, man, anybody who's been blessed by John Gruden has had an, a joyous time you know, have a heart for someone who's going for, through this situation as well. I understand the, the chaos that is caused, but listen, we all have to come together and he needs support as well. So I'm on, it's right. a bittersweet situation for me. Yeah. I mean, I take your point. I mean, redemption and forgiveness, but there has to be contrition, right? There has to be an apology, which we haven't really heard yet. I do want to ask about racism though, because in your book, you tell of an experience you had with the Bucks where a white assistant coach used the N word. And you write, quote, I would think to myself how comfortable he must be around me to say this to my face. He grabbed my shoulder and said it with conviction. I did not say a word. I forced a grin and shook my head. Now, to be clear, that's not Gruden who, who used the N-word, but it was a coach who worked for Gruden. How does this speak to a, an overall acceptance of racism in, in either on the Gruden team or the NFL at large? Well, Jake, uh, I have to be honest with you in my book. I do not detail what uh, that coach's title was. I said that his name will be unnamed. And for, for, for me to come on national television and say that an assistant coach said that, I think that it would speak to uh, some people specifically. So I just would like to say, hey, a coach told me that. Uh, and uh, for someone to say that uh, so openly, uh, I was 23 years old, and it damaged me. Uh, tremendously emotionally to the point to where 15 years later I've been dealing with the repercussions of holding that emotion in uh, my family has suffered simply because when I'm reminded of those dark moments uh, something that is still in me uh, I've grown as a person I've been able to be healed I tell the world listen hurt people hurt people and healed people healed people and I just want to make sure that the message is out clearly. I'm a healed person, and I take a different perspective. I don't hold blame for anything that happened in my career. I'm part to blame for some of the things that went on uh, that, but no player should be subject to that type of language and in that type of situation. And hopefully mm -hmm. the NFL does, it, does their diligence in eradicating those type of leaders who fall into that category. All right. Michael's book is Chasing My Rookie Year, former NFL wide receiver Michael Clayton. Thank you so much. Uh, for your candor and for your insight. We really appreciate it.